Before we show the video, I want to say that sometimes I forget to say this, what I'm about to say, and when I do, very little happens healing-wise to the people who are watching the video because they think they've just didn't been invited to get a little information by watching the video. And they're not expecting anything while they watch the video. But I found out that if I would say, I believe that as you watch this video, you can be healed. I believe as you watch this video, some of you will be healed. I believe it's so strong that I'm going to ask everybody when the video is over to stand up, even if you don't have anything wrong with you, just in agreement with the others. And if you do, put your hand where you need the healing, or if it's something that you need to move to test it out, do so. And those of you who are at least 80% better, and I say 80% better than 100% because I'm going to inspect as soon as the video is over. And Omar Cabrera taught me, if you say if you're healed, there'll be people 80, 85, 90, 95, 98% better, but because they're not 100%, they will not let us know what God is doing. 50%, 25%, it's not going to cause a wow factor. But man, you're already 80% on your way to being 100%. That's, that's significant. And, and, he's, and Omar said, Randy, you'll see so much more. And when the people see what God is actually doing, it'll increase the faith in the room. That's why I do it this way. And so the last story... The last testimony you're going to see on this several stories of testimonies is one of the few testimonies we actually have that we caught live. I mean, you're watching her not give her testimony about being healed, had been healed. You're watching her telling us what she's feeling as she's being healed. And there'll be one point, I'll, I'll, I'll say, now look how much movement, which is very little movement, she's trying, she's, te- she's actually trying to move this left knee, and you'll see her just barely able to move it, and the next thing you see her, she's starting to walk. I, I'll break in, so leave me up in the mic, but I'm just telling you, we cut 20 minutes of prayer out, so it wasn't that fast, but we were praying, and God was healing, And we kept praying, and she kept getting better. And here's the thing I want you to know. She didn't wave her hands. She watched the video of 16 people in a row get healed of metal. The the only testimonies on the video she watched were people getting healed of metal. That's the only thing we were going for. We're going to go for more than that in this one. (laughs) But I want you to know that she didn't get healed watching the video and she couldn't 80%. She wasn't 80%, but power came on her. He came on her and she began to get healed watching the video and she was 30% better when I asked for people, if you're 80% or more, wave your hands. She said, I couldn't do that. But God had started touching me. And as soon as we asked the people to come up for prayer, because God had started touching her, she came up and the moment we started to pray, power God hits her. And you're going to watch an amazing healing take place. Regardless of what you have, the testimony, if anything is similar to yours, take it. If it's not similar but builds your faith, go for it. Stand up and believe God. Do an act. You know, the Lord said, don't let people sit passively waiting to feel something. Get them, ask them to do something. Give them an opportunity to express or an act of faith. Which leads me, right before I show it, I want to tell one more story. Okay. First time I came here, I'm going to preach a sermon for the very first time. I'd never preached it till here. And it was about healing and relationship to acts of obedience through the seven signs in John's gospel. And I had an illustration for every story except the first one where the water was turned into wine. I I didn't have a story. And as I said, well, that's okay. I got six others. That's enough. But as I'm preaching, I see a picture in my mind of uh, the 1950s, late 50s, the little stork, the yellow stork with 
in the back of the cars on a spring. That would, his beak would go into the water like this. That's what I see. And then I get an impression. God wants to heal digestive problems everywhere from the mouth. Actually, he said to the anus, but I didn't say that because I was in church. But now that we're not in the church building, I'll go ahead and say it. And, and he said, anything wrong with anybody? And I just said, your whole digestive system, you can be healed. And, and then, but I, I was trying to figure out, what's this about? And I felt like the Lord said, this is what, it's going to be an act of obedience. Invite the people who have digestive problems to come to the front and tell them they're to do this. <laughs> and this is going on in my head as I'm preaching. And I'm thinking, okay, Lord, how long? He didn't tell me. So I thought, long enough, we'll feel stupid. But not so long, we pass out. <laughs> now, I have to say, I would shorten it now that I'm almost 25 years older than then. But I don't know now if it's either two minutes or three minutes. We did that. So if you would have walked in to Bethel Church on that night, on Sunday night, and I was expecting 20 of the 1,000 to come forward. We will have about 20. We had 200. We had 200. Now, this is where I had to use 1 Corinthians 14, 31. Let everything be done decently and in order. So I lined them all up, and I made them go back seven feet because I didn't want somebody doing this. And right here, somebody else, you know, that wouldn't be decent or in order. So I got them far enough apart that we would do this decently and in order. And here's the deal. Now, pay attention. My grandfather died of colon cancer. And for about two months, I had been having a lot of blood loss. I go to the bathroom. I scared to go to the doctor. So I said, Lord, in my heart, I'm getting in on this. I'm doing this in faith because I believe I, I have something wrong with me and I need to be healed. And so you would have seen the preacher and 200 other people doing this for two minutes or three. And they told me the anonymity because, you know, on a digestive system, you need a little time to know if it worked or not. <laughs> time to eat, you know, time for other things. And uh, <laughs> the receptionist told me they had about 50 calls of all types of problems. One woman for 50 years had had hemorrhoids. It's easier to give that testimony over the telephone than it is <laughs> in the meeting. Anonymity was really important. She was healed, 50 years healed. I never pass blood after that night. So when we ask you to do something that's an act of obedience, there's a reason for it. All right, let's watch the video. Motorcycle accident right here in front of the church five years ago. O que aconteceu? Eu, hoje eu tenho oito pinos e duas platinas para segurar o pescoço. Oito pinos, eight screws and two metal bars on his neck. E eu tinha dificuldade para abaixar o pescoço. And I couldn't do this. Mostra. Eu ia bastante. Just try to hold your applause and excitement till we get to the end or you'll miss it. He's got eight screws. Look at this. And, and <laughs> he's got eight screws and two metal bars. And his head was froze. And he had to turn his shoulder to look. And he had a lot of pain. I said, were you taking uh, strong medication? He said, no, I just took it like a man. That's all I gave him How long did he have this loss of range? Quando foi o acidente? Tem cinco anos atrás. Five years. Five years. Five years pain. Right in front of the church. Oh, okay. Deus de Jesus. Obrigado, Jesus. Deus abençoe. Four screws and two metal bars. Quanto tempo atrás você foi? Dois meses. Two months ago. He takes very strong medication to control the pain. He said he almost didn't come for to the conference.
she had a lump twice the size of an olive on the uh, uh, back of her neck. And she stood up, she felt, você sentiu calor ou eletricidade? Eletricidade. Felt electricity over her body. The lump is completely gone. See, here, John, there's no sign of any lump. It's gone. And she's completely healed. No pain. Hallelujah. She had these huge kidney stones. We've seen this in men, too. Where the stone was five times bigger than the tube. And she said, Randy was saying, believe in miracles, believe in miracles. She felt she needed to go to the bathroom. She went to the restroom, and she said she didn't even have time to, to go to the toilet. The stones just went through, and she passed all the kidney stones. They're, they're Big. Huge ones. Must have known for Impossible to pass natural. Impossible to pass naturally. Glória a Deus, igreja. Deus abençoe. He lost his uh, hearing 100% in both ears. The only way he could hear a little bit was with the hearing aids. Who, with the hearing aids. But she, he said, I said, but did you recoup how, how much percent? He said, Ev I think everything, because it's been such a long time that I don't hear, but I think it's everything. Because
Try to do what you can. Try to do what, for one minute, try to do what you can. Now, if you don't have any uh, loss of range of motion or chronic pain, but you got something that's not, something, a disease, a problem, and you may have to have a test to prove you've been healed, but I believe some of you will be like, you'll feel his power. Now, if you can't prove that you're at least 80% better, we won't count you in the count, but you need an opportunity for us to see if you felt God's power come upon you. Later, I'll ask, a little bit later, if you, like you need to have a test, know if, if you're healed, but you believe you were healed because there was His power came upon you or went through you. I'll give you a chance to testify. I believe I've been healed. And then when you get your test back and got the evidence, be sure and give it. So take 30 more seconds, test things out. Literally, 100% of the people, and by the way, when we reached 5,000 people who had healed of metal issues, I quit counting. And that's about four or five years ago. So we have thousands of people who've been healed of this issue. And I want you to try it out. And many of them, it's not the first time or the second time they try to move. And sometimes you can actually see faith in someone because they just keep going for it. You can see it. I, I, that, that's why you can tell by, by the actual movement in the room. Uh, what, and whatever you need to do, do it. If you've got to step out of your aisle, try to do a push-up. Step out of your aisle, try to do a push-up. If you need to step out of your aisle and try it, whatever you need to do, just do it. All right? Now, you guys ready? It, check your body out. If you are at least 80% better, and we already had 20 people healed right after worship, but if you're at least 80% better, I want you for a minute, a whole minute, because it would take that long for us to count, to wave both hands over your head. You can start now. Check it out. Start waving your hands. Wave high. Okay, 42. Now, how many of you say, I can't wave? I can't do this because I'm not 80%, but I'm getting better. There is improvement. I, 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 you may, may have felt power on you, maybe not, but maybe you just, or you're, you're better. But you're not 80%, but you are better. Wave one hand at me, only one. Now, if I was praying for an individual and God was touching you, I'd pray again. That's all. I want you to keep your hand where you need the healing or moving what needs to be healed. We're going to pray again. I believe we'll see a lot more It's going to be healed as we pray. Because God has started, ow, just, ow, just blessing what he's doing. This is the power of the testimony. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for what you've started. Thank you for the 42 that just got healed, for the 20 that was healed right after worship, and for the ones that's about to be healed. In the name of Jesus, we bless them. We bless them. Just keep your hand up, one hand. And, and those of you standing around, just kind of raise your hand toward them. Just begin to bless them. Agree with me. Father, what you have started, we just thank you, God, and we speak through their bodies to be healed. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, we pray for the gifts of healing to be released. We pray for our angels to come and help. Uh, in Jesus' name, we speak healing. We break every curse. In Jesus' name, we speak to any spirit of affliction. In Jesus' name, we break every genetic uh, predisposition toward disease to be your DNA code to be rewritten. And we just speak, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, for the glory of his name and the, and the glory of the Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Now, check your bodies out again. If you waved your hands a while ago, don't wave them again unless you got healed of a second thing. 
But if now if you weren't 80% a while ago, but now you are, wave both hands over your head for one minute. Wave both hands over your head for one minute. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. God's key. It's hard to count. Can we, get, we pass you up and then somebody else gets healed. How many did you get? How many did you get at that time? How many added? How many was it? I had 36. I had 36. Okay. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many do we have now, Marcus? 79. 79. All right, one last time. Okay, right before we start praying for words of knowledge and, and, and uh, before the laying on of hands, we, if God is quickening your faith, I just believe that. I think we just had another healing. Thank you, God. All right. You may be seated. Change of plans. Okay. You had a significant healing. Maybe it's metal. Maybe it's whatever happened up there. We want you to come on down. You had a significant healing. I'd like to have at least five, five healings. Five people who are healed. There's something you couldn't do, you can do now. You were in pain for a long time, not two or three days, but you were in pain for a long time. Chronic pain, constant pain, and you've had a significant, at least 80% better. I want you to give your testimony. If you, and I, I'd like for it to be people who have, haven't testified before. In the name of Jesus, we have one, two. Huh? Oh, come on up here. That's good. Come on up. I, 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 come on. Ben, you want to do this? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Anything they say... They just got healed of. If you've got something like it, that's the prophecy. If the, the, the testimony of Jesus is prophesying healing to you and receive it. Okay. So what happened to you not? Uh, now or then? <laughs> About two what, what has God done for you tonight? Yeah. I was in the hospital this afternoon. Yeah, I missed this, af this afternoon session because I was in the hospital because my legs started swelling because of a sub, sub whatever hematoma um, from an injury that I had. And my leg was swelling up, blood clot, everything. I could barely walk. I didn't sleep last night. Called the doctor. Actually, I went through a few prayers here. And I wanted to say, you know, God, heal my leg. I went through two prayers. I mean, I want to know who, I mean, I know who a few people pray. There's you right there. Thank you. And it's like, I, I trust the Lord healed me, but I got scared and I went to the doctor. Nothing wrong. No, yeah. no. I mean, I Go believe ahead. in miracles with the, with yeah. medicine. Yeah. And they said they, they, they started taking the test and they were like, you have a major blood clot. It's from the shin all the way to the ankle. Solid blood clot all the way here. From a, a, a blood bleed out of the bone. And I'm like, okay, I can't walk, it's hard. I went for a walk just barely in the, the hotel room, out of the hotel room, and it just hurts. 
I come back, I start getting prayer. And somebody sprinkled gold dust on my leg. <laughs> I mean, he walks up, he's got gold dust. And he's like, I got gold dust. I'm like, okay. He goes, can I put it on your leg? I'm like, yes. So he puts it on my leg and it's like fire just goes right down my spine. And wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that, that was the third prayer and the fourth prayer and the fifth prayer. And we keep praying for it. Swelling's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Could, could you feel with the clock, could you physically feel like a, a lump in your leg? Yeah. Yeah, the, the um, how big was the lump? You were, you actually, there, there it is. She's holding it up. That's how big the lump is. About an inch. So the size of a fist is yeah. what she's showing us. Okay, as he's doing that, I'd like to the two women from GMRI right come over here on this side. Wow. Everybody gives their testimony. I'm going to take them off this side, and you can get information. You're going to praise from God, them. man. So come on and up so, real quick. So right now, the swelling's completely disappeared. I would say I'm at 95 percent. The two women from Global Medical Research Institute from Brazil. Right, is that you? Can I, am I seeing right? Where's the two women from Global Medical Research? Where? Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm going to make this easy for you. All right. Next. What did God do for you tonight? Uh, he, uh, he healed my shoulder about three or four months ago. I was in a motorcycle accident, and uh, I separated the AC joint in my shoulder, and I have a bunch of torn ligaments and tendons, and it's been bothering me ever since. It's just kind of been haunting me. I haven't been able to do push-ups, I haven't been able to work out, I haven't been able to lift heavy things at all. And uh, they prayed for me and Jesus healed me. So what did Jesus do for you tonight? Over 20 plus years ago, the doctors said I would not be able to bend my knees without severe pain. They said, we would try to bend your knees or you're going to be on the ground in pain. You won't be able to get back up. And tonight, he, he healed that. And I can bend my knees all the way down. And I can touch the ground. And... A, a diagnosis from 20 some years ago with poor gait in my legs. God's healed that tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're back again. I didn't want to testify. I told him I didn't want to. <laughs> what, what did God do for you tonight? As you know, the first night I got my range of motion back, and, but I still couldn't move my toes because they're still tight and um, I still have the screws and everything. Well, while he was given the testimony of the toes moving, I took my shoe off, I took my socks off, and I can move my toes. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to encourage everyone that's Caucasian, God just doesn't heal black toes. He will heal other racist toes as well. He is, a, he is, not, he is not a discriminator. What did Jesus do for you tonight? So I just finished um, over 70 rounds now of the most aggressive chemo. Randy had prayed for me this time last year. And in November, my rectal MRI was completely clear, but the, I had to go through six weeks, six days a week of, of the most aggressive chemo and radiation, five of the six days <laughs> eating and sleeping with the chemo. And this time was the worst time, so I've been fighting cancer now for three and a half years, but what happened is 
about a month ago, the Lord said to me, he gave me a word of knowledge. And he said, Mary, you're, you're, you got a perforated eardrum. I want you to go to the, the big specialist at UC Davis and because you, you notice you lost some hearing. I said, yeah, Lord, I'll go. So I went to UC Davis three weeks ago and the big world renowned specialist that I go to said, oh, Mary, you've got a perforated eardrum. And I said, I know. And he said, you do? I said, yeah. And he said, well, we're gonna have to operate, but until, so two little spots in my liver were still there for, from the cancer. And he said, so until you have your MRIs in three weeks, we're not gonna do any surgery. I said, no, no, Hillary, you keep your scalpel on the table because you're not coming near me for any surgery because I know someone that can do far better than any scalpel can ever do. And I said, you wait and see. And so what happened tonight? Like, so did you feel something I'm happening sorry, in your ear? Sorry. So tonight, I, I could, well, you can see, I, I, I'm feeling soaking wet. Yeah. And, but the, the power of God is... There's heat all over. You can feel the heat coming off of her. God's moving on her right now. Thank you, Jesus. So I clicked my ears. I heard the Lord say, click your ears, Mary. Wow. <laughs> click your ears. <laughs> and so I, I'm, even though I'm in medicine, I'm going to declare because I know hearing. <laughs> it's over. It's at least 80%. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> These are the last two. Just one. Okay. Oh, they're together. Okay. Good job. What did Jesus do for you tonight? Um, so I had a really bad um, pain in both my back tendons, and now it's completely healed. Now, you had pain there, but did you have like limited uh, movement as well? Yeah, I couldn't really move, uh, like I couldn't run very far and it hurt a lot. And like just now I started crying and I felt a lot of heat over myself. And then uh, now I'm completely healed. Well, praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 